It's the Cavaliers of Wahoo Bishop Newman and the Vikings of Columbus Lakeview here in the Class C1 State Championship. We talked about Lakeview. They've got two of the best players in Class C1 and Calvin Capels, their junior guard, Dusty Jura, Ju their junior forward. But Wahoo Newman, Bishop Newman, has one of their own, Brent Prohaska. All three are All-Staters. Wahoo Newman scored a lot of points in this state championship tournament. Lakeview's played some pretty good defense. We're in for one heck of a showdown. Let's meet them, the Vikings and the Cavaliers. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association, Altel and U.S. Bank, welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center for the 2001 Class C-1 Boys Basketball State Championship game. Tonight's game features the Columbus Lakeview Vikings versus the Bishop Newman Cavaliers. And now, let's meet the players and coaches in tonight's game. First, the non-starters for the visiting team, the Columbus Lakeview Vikings. Number 10, Brett Copples. Number 14, Dusty Wilkie. Number 24, Wes Gehring. Number 25, Justin Aishi. Number 41, Andy Brandle. Number 44, Bo Flug. And number 51, Curtis Abbott. And now, the non-starters for the home team, the Bishop Newman Cavaliers. Number 12, Josh Lonick. Number 14, Zach Miller. Number 20, Eric Bommert. Number 30, Matt Sabata. Number 40, Russ Muck. Number 42, Kyle Luce. And number 44, Ryan Mock. And now, the starting lineup for the Columbus Lakeview Vikings. A 6'1 junior, number 12, Trevor Osten. A 6'4 junior, number 13, Calvin Koppel. A 6'5 senior, number 23, Daniel Cook. A 6'6 junior, number 40, Dusty Jura. And a 6'7 sophomore, number 50, Josh Mueller. Head coach for the Vikings is Jake Shadley, assisted by Brad Luxinger and Rick Thomas. And now, the starting lineup for the Bishop Newman Cavaliers. A six-foot sophomore, number 22, Alex Kotera. A 6'2 senior, number 32, Tyler Vasha. A 6'3 sophomore, number 34, Kyle Prohaska. A 6'2 senior, number 52, Brent Prohaska. And a 6'1 junior, number 54, Mitch Reed. The coach for the Cavaliers is Paul Johnson, assistants Mike Weiss, Gary Schaefer, and Eric Kessler. Tonight's team officials are Vince Smith and Jeff Williams. The bench official is Todd Burgess. And now, gentlemen, let's play basketball! Newman and Lakeview for the C1 championship. Newman, as we mentioned, has been very prolific on offense, winning game one, 92-56 over Ainsworth, and beating Hastings St. Cecilia in a revenge game, revenge for the state football championship. Newman 80, St. Cecilia 55 in each of those games. Newman was in the 50% range shooting. They'll chuck up a lot of threes. They'll turn the ball over a lot. They've uh, had 38 turnovers in this state tournament, but I guess that's part of the uh, punishment you take for playing the style they do up and down the floor. Lakeview, a little bit better on defense and handling the basketball, but they too can shoot the three. 
an all-star matchup. Each team 22 and two. Jumping center will be Tyler Vasa and Josh Mueller. And Mueller was asleep at the wheel. That was all for Haska. And the Cavaliers will start on offense first. That's Brent Prohaska with two Kyle. Now around to Coachera. And to Reeves. Brent Prohaska kicks it outside. Nice save by Kyle. Keeps it alive for Newman. Head baking a. 26-foot three-pointer. Better left untaken. Now he'll take the more conventional three. Brahaska comes up short. Rebound pulled out by Jura of Lakeview. Dusty Jura, son of former Husker great Chuck Jura. And a former hero of the state tournament. Helped lead Skyler to the 68 crown. High lob down low, trying for the alley oop dunk. Coming in on the back side was Daniel Cope. But nothing doing. Pass shot down low for Reeves. And we have our first foul of the game. It looks like it's going to go against the big guy, Josh Mueller. A lob will come in to Tyler Bossa. In the corner, they open up for Haska. His three is no go good. And the rebound to Calvin Koppel. Topples averaging 22 points a game. Trying to weave his way through traffic and a blocking foul. Capitals caught the Lakeview defense on their heels there. They were backing up. And he draws a foul. Mitch Reeves with the first foul of the game for Wahoo Newman. In the corner. Three is long. And it's 2-0 Vikings. First two minutes of play in the first quarter. The battle for the C1 State Championship. Cotero will back up. Prohaska in the corner for Reeves. Back out to Cotero. Prohaska head fake, drives inside a little closer and gets to the baseline. We're tied at two. Nice touch on the baseline jumper. Tough shot. Ball slotted away. Head fake at three. Prohaska. Wise and holding up that shot. We'll go all the way around the horn to Reed. Double team, backs it out. Chura slaps it out of the hands, but Newman retains. Columbus fans not appreciative of the kind of offense they're seeing right now. Very deliberate, especially from a team that has scored 92 and 80 points in each of their first two games. This is highly unusual for this tournament. Ball knocked free. Reeves keeps it alive. Outside, perhaps, or Faisal. Here's Trevor Osten. Into the front court, slow it up for Koppel. Koppel's between defenders, up in traffic. Hanging right-hander is off the mark. Cavaliers clear it, back the other way. Bounce pass in the lane, fumble. Shot up high, oh, and boy. in. Alex Cotera crashing down on his back. Look what it looked like he was hammered, but he still got the bucket to fall. 4-2 Cavaliers. Jura and Koppels, they each missed a time this season. Koppels with a foot problem, Jura with an ankle problem. But in that stretch, Lakeview didn't fare too badly. Spinning move in the lane, look at Koppels. Oh, 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 oh. off the glass. Nice block. Lakeview wants the goal 10. Kotero with the swat. He has it back on the offensive end. Open shot for Tyler Bossa from the corner. Rebound cleared by Jura. Dusty Jura wants to go in himself. Between defenders, scoop layup, no. Put back, yes. Josh Wheeler there to clean it up and tie the game at four. 
Hard to contain a six foot seven guy. Plays tight end in football and is already getting Division I attention. Three and a half to go first quarter, tied at four. Cotera, Prohaska. Kyle Prohaska. Brent Prohaska for three. Ball tipped around. Cotera comes up with it. Open shot for Tyler Dawson. No. And the rebound to Columbus Lakeview. Both teams struggling from the field early on. Tied at four under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Lakeview has taken Newman out of their game plan. The up-tempo has definitely come to a screeching halt. Ball nearly stolen away. Back down in the lane. Jump shot. Short. Rebound. Everybody fighting for it. And it's Wahoo Newman basketball. Two minutes, 42 seconds left here in the first quarter. Early struggles for each of these two offenses. We're back in a moment. Live coverage of the 2001 State High School Basketball Finals is brought to you in part by State Farm Auto Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Southeast Community College offers 50 technical and academic transfer programs and a variety of continuing education classes. No matter what your goals, your future begins at SCC. NC Plus Hybrids and your local NC Plus dealer. Independent, farmer-owned, NC Plus. Hastings, a college in a classical arts tradition. Hastings College, www.hastings.edu. The Nebraska Abstinence Education Program, working to prevent teenage pregnancy and the spread of sexually transmitted disease by promoting sexual abstinence until marriage. Well, we expected a high-scoring affair, and as it stands right here with just over two and a half minutes remaining in the opening quarter, we're not at a fours. Not the game we expected. Newman, two of eight. Lakeview, two of seven from the field. Mueller now on the Columbus Lakeview bench. He's been replaced by Curtis Abbott. We'll see how that, that changes things up as Mueller has the first four points of this game. Crossover triple by Kyle Lowe's. He has to back it up. Lowe's head fake to the baseline. Tough jump shot rolls out. Popples rebound for Lakeview. He wants to run. Down the floor. Feeds underneath. Blocked from behind by Brahaska. Like you wanted a foul, but referees right there. It could be a clean block. Two minutes to go. First quarter. Lowe's all the way in. Entry pass. Foul. It's going to be on Dusty Jura. And that is his first. Team's second. And Mueller checks back quickly into the lineup, and Dusty Jura will sit down. Inbound for Haska. To Lowe's, hooked from behind by Copples. But it goes to Mott. Newman on offense, in the gray, trimmed in red. Lakeview, the road blue. Dangerous passing going on by the Cavaliers. The Prohaska is playing catch with it on the right side of the floor. Under 90 seconds left first quarter. A look low for Reed. Struggles continue to a pin from the field for Bishop Newman. He's stuck on fours here. And a foul. Popper trying to go in. He was picked up by Mock. Oh, 54, Reeves, I'm sorry. Reeves with his first foul. Second foul on the Cavs. Jura back in for Lakeview. And it looks like we'll have 
number 32. Tyler, Tyler Basso checked back in for a moment as well. Minute seven to go. Both teams struggling on offense. Draws a crowd every time he touches the ball. Back-to-back -back possessions that he's drawn a foul. Ryan Mock with the foul, his first. Kyle Prohaska back in for the Cavaliers. Trevor Osten to Copples. Jura, deep left corner. Copples for three. Rebound Kyle Prohaska. And then Jura came in and tried to get a cheap steal. Instead, knocked it out of bounds. Here comes Calvin Coppel supplying the early D at the three-quarter court spot. Calling for help is Cotera. Yeah, looking to trap. They're into the attacking zone. Under 20 seconds left in the first quarter. <laughs> Even at four. Ball knocked free. Taken away by Koppel. He wants to go in himself. Lays it up and goes. And counted. The left-handed lay-in. Great body control and draws the foul. Plus the bucket. A scoring explosion here. Yeah, no kidding. Kyle Lose with the foul. His first, team's fourth, seven seconds left in the period. And to the free throw line, Calvin Copples. His first two points. After averaging 22 on the season, had 12 on day one against Bennington, 16 and 13 rebounds yesterday against Milford. Seven for Viking lead. Brett Copples comes in for defense and not to get a cheap foul. Final five seconds. Newman dribbling around, looking for the open shot. Puts it up at the buzzer. No. Kyle Prohaska tried to tie it, but I guess that would be the appropriate way to end a strugglesome first period for both offenses. Seven to four. Lakeview back in a moment. Columbus Lakeview leading this game by three after one quarter of play. This is the difference right here. Kelvin Capels, the two and the foul. It's seven to four. Lakeview starts with the lead in the second quarter in the basketball. Trevor Osten to Calvin Koppel. Koppel's trying to dribble out of danger. Prohaska picked him from behind. Lakeview holds on to it. A look down low. Copples to Jura, and he completely tanked the layup. Well, he tried to go in with the left hand. It kind of threw him off. Then the ball knocked away by Osten, but right into the hands of a Newman Cavalier. Desperately seeking offense. Plenty of that. Plenty of defense. Jura going to try to make up for what happened before the time. Oh, boy. Basketball count. Alex Cortera getting position early. He saw Dusty Jura. He had the blinders on. He was going straight to the hoop. Good job by Cortera drawing the charge. Most certainly. Seven to four. Second foul on Jura. Alaska bringing Jura out on him when he sets up on the wing. A look down low, quick man foul. Trevor Oston with the reach in and we'll have shots. 
That's his first, fourth one on the Vikings. That will send Ryan Mock to the free throw line. Mock averaging four points a game at 16 in the opening round. And then was promptly rewarded by not seeing any action yesterday. <laughs> Cavaliers finally break off the four. The scoreboard does work at 7-5. Topper tried the backdoor pass. Looking for Trevor Oston. Cortair was there again. Newman and back quickly on defense. Seven to five. Topper left his feet. And that's a break for Lakeview because he was dribbling in traffic. He threw it into traffic. In the corner, open three. No, it's a kick by Jura. Daniel Cook missed the three, but Jura was there on the weak side to tap it down. Dusty shakes the rust off, gets the put back. Four-point Viking lead, seven to five, under six minutes to go in the first half. Wahoo Newman looking for a field goal. First one in a while, and we're gonna have a reach-in foul on Calvin Copples, his first. Five minutes, 51 seconds to go here in the opening period, or opening half. We have almost as many fouls as points. What happened? Back in a minute. Have ourselves a defensive game here. Nine to five, Columbus Lakeview with the lead. I don't know, is, is it the weather? <laughs> is it the rim? Is the ball oversized? Here's an open three. Wahoo Newman, two out of their first 11. We haven't seen much offense today, and it's not just this game, ladies and gentlemen. It's been in just about all of them. Newman averaging 85 points in the last two contests. Now oh. that one's gonna count. Perhaps a little continuation there. Calvin Copples. Oh, NBA rules. Well, Copples has been the, Copples has been the only offense so far that we've seen in probably the last five minutes. Agreed. Another chance for a three-point play opportunity. And it's good. Inadvertent buzzer there, and now we're back to action. 12 to 5. Biggest lead is 7. Prohaska. Still looking for something out of front. Prohaska. Head fakes a three. Pull up. Oh, boy. Jura. Jura. Now down the floor. Jura's going to take it in himself. He scores and count the basket. No offensive charge this time. Nice left-handed land from Jura. And he draws the foul. Helps First get the, the block. block. Yeah. Capels rewards him at the other end. Look at the lefty. Back with more in a minute. Well, it was a three-point ball game after the first quarter. It's suddenly a nine-point lead for Columbus Lakeview. Little outburst here by Lakeview. Helped out by their defense. 15 to five. And Wahoo Newman just struggling terribly from the floor. At the baseline, fade away, rolls off. Last touch by Newman. Newman is absolutely shell-shocked offensively. The sel shot selection at times has not been good either. The last sequence was a perfect example. Yeah, credit that to Lakeview's D. Down the floor, great pass. Oh! Underneath. Tipped out. Last touch by Newman. Hmm. 
And right now the Cavs not catching any breaks on the calls either. They look for sure as if Lakeview was going to be the last one to touch, but obviously not. Underneath, Copples, no. And a foul. And that's the second one on Josh Mueller. And he will check out. Curtis Abbott is back in. Jake Shapley, the head coach of the Vikings, trying for the first state championship in school history. This is just their third appearance at the state tournament. A near steal by Daniel Cook. Prohaska goes in baseline, has to back it up. Dangerous pass saved by Kyle Prohaska. Driving the lane, hanging shot. I don't know where that was going. Lakeview all over it. Cavs still stuck on five. Jura. Oh, boy. Topples with an incredible look to Jura. And the Vikings are on a roll. Seven points for Dusty Jura. And a foul. Kyle Lose goes crashing to the floor. Foul is on Curtis Abbott. That's the seventh team foul against the Vikings. So it beats free throws and a chance to break this drought. Kyle Lose at the line. Vikings not shying away from playing aggressive defense. That's what's translated in this offensive explosion. Catching some breaks going the other way. But Newman, the story is that they're two out of 14 from the score. This is second. Topples the rebound. Topples wants to run. Takes it in himself. It is good and a foul. And wow. A foul. Topples just feeling it, putting on cruise control, just flying by everybody. He has eight points. He averages 22 in the regular season. He's averaged 14 in the tournament. And that is the third foul on Reeves, the second leading scorer on this team at 14 points a game. The Vikings are taking every opportunity to run it down the floor. Any opening they get, they take it. Three-point play, clock champ missed. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Vikings lead by 13 in the lane. And finally, a field goal. The first one since the first quarter. Ryan Mock down low. Prohaska. And all of a sudden, a little outburst by the Cavs. Triple team in the backcourt. Jura gets it up ahead to Gehring. Down low, great pass. Osten falling away, good. Great ball movement. Somebody, <laughs> somebody hold me back here. Yeah, we, we actually have an outburst of points by both teams. Right. Prohaska, long three, good. Oh, here we go. That's more like it. This announcer, I like defense, but. Let's go. Let's run it. Let's see what happens. Back from behind. Kyle Lowe's flying in there. Well, Newman's known for running the, picking up the tempo and running the ball back and forth on the court. The Vikings have been doing just that. Newman coming alive now. 21-13. Eight-point Viking lead. 2.49 left first half. Daniel Cook. Trevor Oston. Five second count is on. Lost it on the floor and taken away. Brahaska, one on two, goes in, up and under. No. Get up, get up. Offensive board, put back. Yeah. Reps letting the play there. And a timeout, Columbus Lakeview. And the Cavaliers have set sail. And let the games begin. 223 left, second quarter. Vikings 21, Cavaliers 15. They were stuck on four points forever. Then they got to five. 
And then they got to six. <laughs> and now we're starting to see some offense. As we take a look at the latest outburst, just muscled it away. And Prohaska shows why he is an all-stater. Takes it in strong and then gets a little help from his teammates, Ryan Mock. They have a Brent O'Meter going in Wahoo. <laughs> well, they're going to have to crank up that meter a little more. Cavs still trailing by six. That's a far cry of what it was earlier. And the momentum has switched now in favor of Newman, although they trail. <laughs> 21 to 15, Lakeview by six. Here comes the pressure. Jura gets it away to Cook. Cook from behind, poked away. Another great play, Kyle Lowe's. Can't put your guard down at any moment. Open three from the inbound, no. Mueller falling down, puts it back in. Josh Mueller. He scored the game's first four points. Now he's come back with his six, running it down the floor, and Rock Mock. I'm liking this pace. I, I can get into this. <laughs> Austin. Topple, six-point Viking lead, under two minutes left, first half. C1 State Championship, the fifth of six title games this Saturday. Topple to Mueller, 18-footer, barely draws iron. Tracked down by Cook. Cook, Jura in the lane. No. What's the call? Charge or a block? It's going to be a block. It's going to be a block. Could have gone either way. But Mock, Ross Mock didn't have position. So the foul is his second, team's eighth. And at the line, Dusty Jura. Remember, he's playing with two fouls. You don't want to lose this guy, second leading score on the team. And one of your top rebounders as well. Misses the first, he's kind of, I don't know if there's something wrong with his left hand, kind of clenching it there. He's shaking off something. Yeah, he's doing that a couple of possessions ago. His eighth point, 24-17. Newman down seven. Prohaska, long three, short. Rebound to Lakeview. And the Vikings will slow it down here a little. That pace was definitely favoring Wahoo Newman. Though at times we've seen Lakeview try to make something happen. That was knocked away by Kyle Prohaska. Up ahead to Brent. Brent stops in the lane and puts it down. Nice little stutter step there from Brent Prohaska. Kind of draws the defense up and he goes right on by. He scored seven points here in the last three minutes. And a reach-in foul on Mock, and that's his third. <laughs> Into the game for the first time, Matt Sabata, 6'1", junior. And at the line, it's Calvin Copples. Eight points, two of three at the line. This is the front end of the one and one. Down to 40 seconds left. Here in the first half. Foul is on the floor as Prohaska again. One thing you notice about Brent Prohaska, Newman in their home jerseys are that gray tone. Yeah. It's a much darker tone all up and down his back. He works hard. He runs nonstop. This is the front end of his one and one. You can see why Prohaska right in the face of Jura. 30 seconds left in the half. Viking by five. Viking lead by five. They're going to try to play for the last shot if Newman's going to let him get it.
Ostin cross court. Copples takes the three. Could be a big shot to end this half. Prohaska wants an answer in the corner. Head fake. Three seconds left. Prohaska for three of his own. It's gone. And that's how we end the first half. Back to back, all skaters hitting back to back three pointers. And after the longest time of offensive anemic play, we have a ball game on our hands. Lakeview 27, Newman 22. Let's go down courtside with Mike. Down here on the side, uh, Lakeview coach Jake Shadley. Uh, that first half, both teams were struggling offensively. Then somebody woke the dogs up, and uh, both, both teams were hitting. Yeah, I think both teams were a little bit tight to come out, and uh, they didn't shoot the ball very well to start with, and, and we didn't either. And I think both teams got their transition going a little bit, and, and that kind of let uh, some points be scored in the first half. What's in the plan for the second? Well, you know, we, we have to transition to defense better than we did there towards the end of the first half. We need to get guys back. We can't allow them to kick the ball up quick like that and get a cutter to the basket. Uh, and we need to take advantage of opportunities on offensive transition when they present themselves. All right, thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Vikings up 27 to 22 over the Cavaliers. There's the score, 27 to 22. I'll tell you what, John Bishop, second quarter is something we're a little more accustomed to from these two teams. Yeah, a scoring outburst. Yeah, and we saw a couple of the All-Staters taking charge. Calvin Copples with 11 points in the first half. Brent Prohaska with 12 points in the first half, each on the 10-11 All-State team. And then, of course, just Dusty Jura also on this squad for Columbus Lakeview. Nathan Lashley of Mitchell, Jared Myers of Centura rounding out this all-state list. And again, Class C1, uh, many of the experts, many of the people who follow high school basketball have said all year that Class C1 is the most competitive class in the state and has a lot of talent. And uh, you're seeing a great example of that here in this first half of this C1 state championship game. A lot of fine teams did not make it this far. Milford, the two seed out of this uh, class, Hastings St. Cecilia, the defending uh, football state champions. Just a lot of great athletic talent in Class C1. So to be named to this All-State team is really an added special bonus. It really is, and like you said, three of those All-Staters playing in this game as we speak, and two of them really stepped it up and notch. The, the guards on each side in Copples and Prohaska providing the spark that each team needed as they head to the locker room. Can't really say one team over the other has the momentum as it stands right here. They're both kind of cruising. Vikings 27, Cavaliers 22, and we're back with more in a moment. Lakeview leads Bishop Newman 27-22 at halftime as they prepare to recognize some folks who have helped out at the state tournament over the years. Let's take a look at the first half numbers of this game. And the uh, field goal percentage came up for both teams, especially Newman, who started out two out of their first 14. Since that moment, they went seven of their next nine. So they really warmed up. Newman led at halftime by Brett Prohaska with 12 points. Calvin Copples has 11 for the Vikings. 27-22. Lakeview leads Newman. Back with more in a minute. Right. We're back at the Devaney Center. Special halftime ceremonies as they honor some distinguished service awards. And we'll have a special award coming up in just a moment for someone who has been so important to this state tournament, especially in the modern era. And I guess you can define the modern era as when they moved in here to the Devaney Center back in 1976. In fact, the very first athletic event held in this building was the 1976 state championship game not a nebraska event the high school state championships back in the old days they used to pack that coliseum they would play three games simultaneously in the coliseum back in the uh, early days of this tournament and of course since they've moved to the devaney center they've been able to spread the wealth out 
to sites all around the capital city. Columbus Lakeview leading Wahoo Newman 27-22 at halftime of this Class C1 game. I believe they're about ready to uh, honor Mr. Jim Riley, who has been around the NSAA for the better part of three years and has done just a tremendous job with his state tournament. This year, they are going to clear 100,000 in attendance for the state tournament. And let's go down now courtside and pick up the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have one last great round of applause for these five important people in the Nebraska School Activities Association. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Jim, Jim does not know what's coming. Ladies and gentlemen, surprise. at this time, the Nebraska School Activities Association would like to honor and give special recognition to an individual who has devoted 31 years to the state basketball tournament. Jim Rudd, Executive Director. This marks the 25th straight year that Jim Rowney has served as tournament director for both the boys and girls state basketball tournaments. This year's state basketball tournament is Jim's last as he will retire in August after serving 31 years on the NSAA executive staff. Jim Rowney has been the executive director of the NSA since 1976. His 25 years as executive director is currently the second longest tenure of any executive director of a state activities association in the country. Here are some of the state basketball tournament facts from his 25 years. From 1977 to 2000, 3.1 million spectators have attended the state tournament with a three-day record attendance of 108,000 fans for the 1999 Boys State Tournament. And a new three-day record attendance, 61,000 fans, occurred last year at the Girls State Tournament. Counting this year's Boys and Girls State Tournaments, 2,176 teams have competed in state. 1,904 basketball team games have been played. 272 team championship trophies have been awarded. And so on behalf of Bob Resnick of Omaha West Side, and we present this great award to the NSA head of the, the Nebraska School Activities Association Executive Director, Mr. Jim Rowell. Congratulations. Jim was a little embarrassed. He left the floor. Yeah, right? <laughs> he took that nice, big, panoramic picture with him. But Jim Riley retiring this year, 25 years as executive director. He was an assistant coach in Omaha and used to send letters to the tournament directors about how things could be done differently. And he says, ironically enough, my suggestion I never followed when I actually took over the tournament. <laughs> well, since Jim Riley, as you heard in the announcement, attendance of over 3.1 million, this year they will clear 100,000 fans as uh, the tournament attendance will be up almost probably around 10,000 more this year than was here last year at the state tournament. It seems to be, you know, they, they, they proclaim that high school sports is not what it used to be. Well, 8,000 fans in the old Coliseum is one thing, but 10,000 fans in here, that's still 2,000 more. It's not a packed house, but there's still more people here. And even with all of the other distractions that are out there, you see the crowds that are here, even for the smaller classes, and you know that high school sports is thriving, and Jim Riley has been a tremendous part of that here in the state of Nebraska. He's made it an electric atmosphere here. Everybody is juiced up about this, including special guest with Mike DiGiacomo. Mike. Uh, here with head coach Paul Johnson of Wahoo Newman. Uh, it took both teams a little bit to, to get on the board here coming in the first half. Yeah, you know, we came out of the gate. I thought we had some pretty good looks at the basket, and we didn't knock any down. We kind of dug ourselves a, a pretty good hole, you know, and we've been able to fight back a little bit, uh, but sometimes you get to dig a, dig a big hole, it's hard to come back. 
What'd you talk about to the kids at well, halftime? Well, a couple of things. I mean, the Caples kid is so good with the dribble penetration. I, he's just killing us, you know, and we're gonna have to cut down his penetration. I think that's that's the most important thing right now. Uh, still kind of the same game plan? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. We make a few adjustments, you know, try to get a little bit more aggressive on offense. They're doing a good job of slowing us up, which, which is what they want to do, you know. So we try to come out, pick up the tempo, get some looks on offense and see what happens. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck in the second half. We'll be back with the start of the second half coming up. Welcome back. It's 27 to 22. We saw some fireworks of flying in the second quarter. 20 points scored by Columbus Lakeview, 18 by Bishop Newman. John Bishop, I think we're going to see a few more sparks. All I ask is that the long halftime doesn't take away some of the fire that we saw. That was a fun quarter to watch, especially oh, yeah. in the last three minutes. As we get ready to start the second half, it was Brent Prohaska and Calvin Koppels lighting it up here in the second quarter. We'll see what they can do here in the third. Wahoo Newman has won one state championship previously, 1991. They were runner-up to Tecumseh. In 1997, the last team to go undefeated through a state tournament season. Lakeview going for their first ever state title. This is just their third trip to state. And here we go. Second half, game on. Kotera, Kyle Prohaska, touch it first for Wahoo Newman. Vasa, and they throw it away. And just like that, they change their call. The officials see some of the Lakeview fans not happy about it. Pull up jump shot. Good. Alex Kotera says, hey, I can score two. And it's all of a sudden a three-point game. Remember the Vikings at one point were up 10. Trying to work off a screen. Topples floats it out there. Mueller, offensive board, and the putback. That's how he scored all of his points. That's Mueller right. has eight. Tough He's to box right that there. guy out. Yeah, six feet seven and nearly 300 pounds. Long three has scored. Alex Kotera, five points here in the first minute of the quarter. And the Cavs are within two. In the front court, Lakeview. Newman's turned it up a little bit. A look inside, a look outside. Copples, trap, gets it away to Jura. Jura puts it up and is fouled. Foul is going to be on Mock. Ross Mock. His first, first foul in the second half at the free throw line, Dusty Jura. Ended the first half with eight points. But Jura has had an excellent tournament. Scoring 29 and 19 points for an average of 24. Well above his average of 19. Rattles down the second one, and the Viking lead is back to two possessions. 31-27. Kyle Prohaska hanging up there. Puts it off the glass. Oh, boy. Take it away, and a tie game, Brent Prohaska. And a quick foul, trying to get it in. Maybe not the foul they wanted. I believe it's going to go against Tyler Vasso. It is, it's his second. Second team foul on the Cavs, but the game is tied. Ball kicked off by Copples, picks it up, and no travel call. Thought we'd see one there. Tipped away, up ahead. Could Prohaska catch up to it? Yes! But he was out 
Carolina so much out of control trying to catch up to the ball that it was hard for him to make yeah. the layup. That right would have been amazing if he'd have done it. Yeah, Newman, that's their style, up-tempo. Right idea, they're kicking it in here. Topples goes baseline, cut off, trying to make it work, and no way. Great defense by Wahoo Newman, and Lakeview turns it over. Yeah, the Cavaliers disrupting any kind of rhythm that Lakeview is trying to establish. Nine turnovers, fade away. Hit off the side of the backboard. Topples running with it. Down the floor. Jura. Layup. Score. Foul. Count it. Jura does such a good job in the open court for a big guy to run like that, and he constantly has been drawing fouls on the break. Second foul on Ryan Mock. Third foul on the Cavaliers, and that will bring Mitch Reeves off the bench. Reeves had three fouls in the first half. The third leading score, or second leading score, I beg your pardon, on this Newman team. Three-point play opportunity missed. Brahaska nearly stripped from behind. Keeps control of it. Wanted to take the three. Defense came out. Kyle Prohaska trapped along the baseline. Last touch by Lakeview. Jura wanted it to go the other way. I have a feeling the first quarter and a half was just really nerves, especially from Wahoo Newman. Oh, sure, just the fluke, really. They've really settled down, and we've got a good game on our hands at the baseline, and Rahaska's fouled, he'll shoot two. Uh, I think this one's gonna go against Mueller. Yep. And that's his third foul. He's the big enforcer on the inside. So Brent Bahaska to the line, 14 points. <laughs> Mueller will check out. Curtis Abbott will check in. And then they say it touched off a of Jura. He's shaking his head in disgust. And the Cavs have a chance to take the lead. Which would be their first for Hask on the inbound. Yes! They got it into Reeves. They found for Hask at the baseline. Oh, boy. Has the lead. Ball taken away. Tie-up. Vikings get possession on the tie-up. For Hask is just taking over right now. Yeah. The momentum is definitely in favor of the Cavaliers as they're suddenly in charge with a one-point lead. 34-33 and a touch foul. I think it's going to be on Prohaska. Yep. And that will be just his first. No trouble there. 17 points for Prohaska. He had two points early in the second quarter. He scored 15 since that time. Basically, he scored 15 points in less than a quarter of action. We're not quite halfway through the third. A look underneath. Jura. Great pass by Coppins. That duo works well together. 35-34. They're only so or they're only juniors, too, so they have another year. Foul on Jura. His third. So keep an eye on that. Dusty Jura with three fouls. That's the second foul of the Vikings here in the second half. Rahaska backs up. Botera draws a double team. Rahaska head fakes a 23-foot three-pointer. Vikings by one, 34-35. Baseline pass nearly deflected out of bounds by Jura. And he's got another foul. That one's going to be on Topples, and that's his third. The momentum in this game is with the Cavaliers. Definitely foul troubles for Lakeview. And they're going to call an offensive foul this time as Kyle Prohaska tried to make some room for him down in the left lower block. 
And the official right on top of it was watching it all the way. And that's a foul on Prohaska, his first. Fifth one on the Cavaliers here in the half. And the Vikings get the ball back. Topples quickly into the front court. Stops in the lane. Gets his own mid. Oh, 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 he just threw it up. Oh, he boy. He just threw it up. He just knew where he was. Yep. Bounce pass for Reeves. They say it was last touch by Lakeview. Columbus fans voice their displeasure. Yeah, it looked like Mitch Reeves touched the last. It would appear that way. I thought it went between his legs, and apparently it did not. 3.47 to go, third period. Vikings by three. Cavaliers had a one-point lead, but suddenly Vikings have jumped back in front by three. Two in part to the circus shot from Helmut Topples. Da, 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 da. That's right. <laughs> Inbound to Kyle Prohaska. Top for Lowe's and he travels. That's only the fourth turnover against Newman in this game. 344 left, third quarter. Lakeview by three. Trapped in the corner. Topples trying to get it out of traffic. Throws a desperation pass and somehow finds Daniel Cook. Topples for Ostin. Prohaska coming in on Copples. Tried to slap it out of his hands again. Now outside. Cook. Good. That's a three. It's a long time coming for Daniel Cook. And just like that, the Vikings are back up six. Great pass. Prohaska underneath the reach, but he missed the bunny. He had Dusty Jura in his face, and that's intimidating. Copples high, arcing three. Rebound for Hosko. Wahoo Newman needs an answer here. They've seen their lead go away. Uh, Kyle Prohaska drives baseline, bounces it away. Bad pass. Here comes Topples. Oh, boy. Look at that lefty with the rotation. Just to prove to us that that last one wasn't a fluke. Eight-point lead. A stop in the lane. Oh, big hit shot there for Kyle Lowe. They needed that in a desperate way. Newman down six. Again, pressure in the backcourt. Long baseball pass ahead to Cook. And they'll slow it up. No, they won't. Here comes Copples again. He travels. Yep. And it might have been a good thing because bodies were flying and Copples could have been in danger of picking up that fourth foul. Remember, Copples and Jura are playing with three fouls. And if you throw in Mueller, he's right now, I think he's still on the bench. Yes, he is. The three leading scorers on this Columbus Lakeview team all have three fouls. And we still have 10 minutes to go. Prohaska wants three. Jura to Cook. Nice hesitation, but it rolls off. Scored by Jura. Oh, nice follow. Offensive board, a put back. Jura, 16 points, 8 rebounds. A look inside, a look back outside. Prohaska fakes a 3. Mock with the miss. Vikings could go up 10 here. Or 11. Minute 20 left, third quarter. Good job by Lakeview to take the momentum right back in this basketball game. It started out Wahoo Newman's quarter, but since it has gone to Lakeview. sharp out there. He draws the defense up. Newman thinks they're going to get a trap. He dribbles right by him and then draws a blocking foul. Topples will inbound. 
to Mueller. Cook. Five second count is on. They get it away to Koppel. Under a minute to go, third period. Copples wants to go in himself. And that will be two shots. Copples, even with three fouls, not afraid no. to make something happen out there for the Vikings. Well, it got on this far. Got to be aggressive. Got to take some risks if you want to succeed. And that's why Copples averages 22 points a game. He now has 16. The three All-Staters, by far and away, the leading scorers in this game. Makes them both, and it's a 10-point lead. Newman's gonna need another push here. Prohaska, short. You wonder if they're, one, if they're having him do too much. Rahaska, I believe he kicked it. No reset. Back in the game, Alex Kotera, who scored the first five points of this quarter. And Brent Rahaska will depart. They don't want a cheap foul here on their leading score. Twenty-seven seconds left. Vikings playing for the last shot, perhaps. And a rare mistake by Calvin Copples. Took his eye off the ball for a split second, and it slipped off his fingers and out of bounds, and now Lakeview will make a mass substitution so that they don't risk getting Jura and Mueller in foul trouble. They already have three. Cavaliers really could use this shot here to end the quarter on a high note. They're down 10. At that time, Cook with the rebound and we'll go to the fourth quarter. Vikings, 46. Cavaliers, 36. The final eight minutes of the C1 championship game coming up next. quarter of the Class U1 State Championship. Wahoo Bishop Newman has the ball, but trails by 10, 36 to 46. Reeves back in, had it for a moment in the corner. Oh, they almost lost that one out of bounds. Brent Prohaska in, too strong. The 10th rebound for Dusty Jura. What a second half he's had. Rebounds, Lakeview 31, Newman 15. Size, definitely advantage. Yep. 10 point lead for the Vikings and the ball. Oston dribbles out of traffic. Starting to use that clock now. Yep. They're going to take their time. And taking their own sweet time. They're going to make Wahoo Newman come at them. Ball knocked away. Mueller got in the way. They save it. Dulu's on the floor. Newman basketball. Body's flying. Boy, Koppels took a shot right in the mouth. He's slow getting up. And a timeout taken by Wahoo Newman. 6.26 left. Vikings 46, Cavaliers 36. We're back after this. Newman, it's time to let it all hang out. This is the final quarter of play, and you trail by 10 to Columbus Lakeview. Rahaska's been quiet here for a little while. 
Part of the reason why Wahoo is stuck on 36. There's Kyle Cole. Changing hands going in with the left. Nice entry pass by Cotera. Trap in the backcourt. Nearly taken away. Lakeview ball. He was on the line. But a good hustle by Alex Cotera. Almost opened up an opportunity for Wahoo Newman. Kyle Prohaska now comes out. Six minutes left in the game. Vikings by eight. Long pass down the floor. Jura blocked. Is it a foul or just a block? Just oh, a block. Boy. Pretty aggressive no block. Yeah, aggressive there's block to come away without hitting anybody. And there's, yeah, there's, there's no satisfying these Lakeview fans. And that's going to be a foul because flying over the top was Kyle Lowe's. Got a piece of the body of Calvin Copples as he went left baseline. That's his third. Eighth foul on the Cavaliers. One and one coming up for Calvin Copples. Four of six from the line. 17 points. Six rebounds. Four assists. Missed the front end of the one and one. Break for the Cavs. Down eight. Into the front court. Taken away. And almost taken back. But Jurek bounces it up in the air and keeps it alive for Lakeview. He carried it. Another break for Newman. Time to start cashing in on all these favors. Pass down low. Three, four. Six point game. Again, here comes that backcourt pressure. Jura into the front court, dribbles out of danger. And calls a timeout. Five minutes and four seconds left. Columbus Lakeview 46, Wahoo Newman 40, the final 504 of the fourth quarter after this. Well, Mitch Reeves bucket moments ago cut the Lakeview lead down to six. But it was a nice entry pass by Cotero that made it happen. Just three points for Reeves, who averages 13 a game. <laughs> and the Viking lead is back up to eight. Under five minutes to go. Los Brohaska. And around and around it goes. Cotero. Wants to go inside, looks underneath for Reeves. That would have been tough. Prohaska tries to clean it up. And a foul. And it's on Jura. Thank you, foul on number 40, Dusty Jura. That's his fourth first and Number four on Dusty Jura. If he's coming out right now, and he is with four and a half minutes remaining in the game. The Vikes cling into an eight point lead. Want to save him for the end if they need him. And I'm sure they will. Mm -hmm. Curtis Abbott will come in. No lead is safe here. Attention, please. We ask that you do not throw objects onto the floor. Delay of game for something thrown on the floor. Thank you. To get it into Reeves. Reeves has the ball knocked away. Osten got his hands on it and a turnover. Just the seventh turnover of the game against Newman, but it was very ill-timed. And a foul. Kyle Lowe came in over the back. Could have had that called about 10 seconds earlier. That's right. But they didn't get it. If you're the Vikings, that's fine. Let the clock run. Why go to the line so much? Los with four fouls. On the front end 
bottom of the water line. He'll get the bonus. Daniel Koch, three points. Second one, no good. 49 to 40. Coming up on four minutes to play. Rahaska, open three. Yes! Putera! He started the second half that way. Six point game again. Ball nearly turned over. Look out. Just about threw it away. Trying to get out of traffic. Oh, nice play by Copples. He keeps it going. Lakeview somehow stays alive. Throws one up. No. Rebound and again. Mueller. All ten of his points on offense. That's right. Back. Just like that. Right place, right time. It's good to have a 6 7 frame in there. Underneath Reeves. Back to Fallon County. Reeves, the forgotten man under there, his last six points have been wide open. The foul is on Evans. His second, and now Jura comes back into the game. Well, this is a stretch run now, Jake Shadley says, four fouls or not. Get in there, son, we need you. Here's Mitch Reeves. One of two at the line, five points. This will make it a five-point game. And it rolls in. Checking into the Newman lineup, Ryan Mott. Reeves will sit down. A good run for Reeves. Thank you again to inbound. Here's Hunchura. So good through traffic. Ball poked from behind, and they call for Hoska with the foul. His second. That means two free throws. As you take a look at Paul Johnson. That's 6'6", Dusty Jura. He can run the floor pretty well for a big guy. There's no problem breaking the press. Misses the third. Reeves is back in. 51 to 46, Columbus Lakeview with the lead, 3.14 to go, missed the second, and Reeves gets the all-important rebound. Newman can draw within a single possession here. Lost it on the dribble. Rojasca hasn't scored in a while. To Sotera, back to Rojasca, looking for the open shot. Rahaska had an open three, now moves towards the baseline. Three-point game. Tough fadeaway jumper on the baseline. But for Kasa, for Haska. Koppel tapped in the corner and got it away again. Boy, is he good with that ball. Jura in the front court. Three-point Viking lead, 225 left. All kinds of traffic. Needs spacing on the floor, and they get it. Trevor Oshman. The defense chant coming up from the Wahoo side of the floor. 2.10 to go. Two minutes to go. Work that clock. Under two minutes left. Ball knocked away last touch by Newman. Daniel Cook back off the bench. Boy, if Lakeview was, had any problems at all getting it inbounds, they haven't shown it. Thanks to that man right there, Calvin Copples. Minute 50. Copples, stripped by Prohaska, they say a foul. Oh, he's in disbelief, but they call it on him. That's his third. And you can see Paul Johnson wants a timeout. And we'll get it. Two free throws coming up for Columbus Lakeview. When we come back from this timeout, 51 to 48, Lakeview. Possession arrow belongs to the Vikings. Cavaliers have two timeouts left. Lakeview has three. Cavaliers, as we mentioned, double bonus. They've had 10 fouls for a while. 
Vikings, five fouls. Players in foul trouble. We've already talked about Dusty Kerr of Lakeview with four. Los of Newman with four. Prohaska and Reeves each with three. Calvin Copples with three. There's your game reset. Three throws coming up, big ones too. Just a one possession game, as you said. Anybody's ball game with 145 left. Both teams want to get the ball in the hands of their guard. A few more weapons in favor of Lakeview right now with all those powers in there. Yeah. And the way they've been able to handle the ball. They have 13 turnovers, which is six more than Newman. But believe me, folks, it could be a whole lot more. They've handled the press about as well as you can expect. Hopples has missed his last three free throw attempts. Missed that one too. A three will tie it. Lahaska into the front court. Kotera. And a foul, and it's on Copples, his fourth. And the plot thickens. Trying to lob it to his brother, and it went over his head. A costly turnover against Newman. A minute 20 to go. Three-point Viking lead. Pull from behind by Prohaska. Oh, by Reeves, I'm sorry. He'll take it down the floor, but the layup misses. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. Great opportunity there. Now, Lakeview's going to just try to use this block for all it's worth. Golden opportunity. Jura into the front court. Foul or timeout? Timeout. As Jura went crashing to the floor. But the timeout was called first. 30 second timeout by the Vikings. They have two left. Exactly one minute to go. Vikings 51, Cavaliers 48. Two golden opportunities. Boy. First off the missed free throws, yep. then off the steal, and both times Newman comes up empty handed. That's too bad for the Cavaliers. They're definitely not out of it. They just got to shake it off, put it behind them, and right now, Ball game right here, 60 seconds left, trailing by three. Well, you've got to find a way to stop them for a third straight time. Lakeview has not been good at the line. They are 9 of 19 as a team. In fact, neither team has really shot well from the free throw line. Newman is 4 of 9. So here we go. Inbound to Copples. Foul and free throws coming up. Well, why not? He's missed four straight from the charity strike, and it's no longer a charity. These are foul shots. You've got to earn them. And that's what Newman's strategy is going to have to be now, at least to get the ball back. Here's Calvin Copples, 17 points this evening. Big, big free throw there for the junior. Makes it a two-possession game. <laughs> 53 to 48. Newman down by five. Kotera. Prohaska. Kotera again. They go to the corner. Prohaska was open for three, but Lakeview quick to attack. Great defense by Lakeview. Now Prohaska open for three. No! Oh boy. Man, what defense by Columbus Lakeview. Did a good job. They finally got the good reversal on the ball. And they got Prohaska open for a good look, but didn't get the bounce. And the Cavaliers burn their final timeout with 30 seconds left, and it's looking bleak for Wahoo Newman. Viking fans can sense, they can feel it. First championship 
just 30 seconds away. Again, the possession arrow belongs to Lakeview in the event of a tie-up. I'm sorry, the Cavs, they do have one more timeout. They have one more timeout. Right now, though, they need a stop. Yeah, if they can't get the steal off the inbounds, they're going to go straight to the foul, I'm sure. Send them to the foul line and hope to get some misses. Lakeview's been good at getting it in. Five-second count is on. Topples fouled. And he'll come back the other way to shoot free throws. If he can make both of them here, the game is essentially over. Five-point game. Under 30 seconds to go. 28.8 seconds. It's still a two-possession game. But just 28 seconds remain, and one of those possessions has to be a three. If he makes this one, they both have to be a three. Missed that one. Newman still has a chance, but they need to get a shot off. 25 seconds left. Rahaska, front court. Patera, wasting too much time. Reed, it's gone. 16, 15 seconds left, quick timeout. Three-point game. Vikings lead it. Reed. Now with six points. It's eight points, I'm sorry. Eight points. Well, Coach Paul Johnson in the huddle right there is telling him exactly the same thing. Here's another look at Reed. Nice entry pass by Cortera. Nice concentration, too, with Jura and Reed's face. Make it a three-point game. One possession game. Deny him the ball, try to go for the steal at first. You don't get the steal. Foul, stop the clock. Hope that uh, what happened last time down the last trip down the court happens again. They miss the free throws and they get one last shot. It's a lot to ask for, which is 14.8 seconds remaining in the ballgame. Well, can they answer the bell one more time on these inbound plays? Second count was on, and they need to take a timeout. Good defense by the Cavaliers. One more timeout now for the Vikings. Great defense. And Paul Johnson, the coach of Bishop Newman, had a chance to see what they were going to run there in the press break. Tell them essentially to do the same thing. Ah, you got to love the spirit. Probably about uh, 6,000 in here right now, maybe seven. Yeah, easily. Getting ready for the Class B game, some of them. But right now, all the focus is on the floor and the final 14.8 seconds. Big inbounds play coming up for the Vikings. Newman looking for one more stop and a chance to squeeze off a game-tying three. Lakeview to get it in. They do. The Copples and a quick foul. And that's the fifth on Lose, and he is done. Kyle Lowe's will foul out with two points, two assists. And again, free throws are on the way. Well, Newman did a good job of getting the quick foul. Just one second ticked off the clock, 13.7 seconds. Now Trevor Ostin will shoot two of the biggest free throws of his life. If he can make he can make one. Yeah, he makes one of them. Or two. A, either way, the task becomes almost impossible. He hasn't attempted a free throw today, so that's that's hard. Hard to do. Walk up there for the first time today with 13.7 seconds left on the clock and hit the front end of two. 
He's shooting into a friendly background. The Lakeview student section's right behind the basket. He misses them both. Cavaliers have 13 seconds to tie it and send it in overtime on a three-point shot. That's it. A four-point game. Sigh of relief from Platt County. And then it's like everybody back and back. Here. Yep. Don't want to risk a foul or any kind of mishap to send Newman to the line. Make them both. 12 seconds left. Prohaska, quick three. Yes! With eight seconds left. They need to get it in. Clock is running. Four seconds left. Long baseball pass. They've got it. And a foul with four tenths of a second left. Prohaska made the three, but... That's how crucial those last two free yeah. throws were of Ostens. Trevor Osten, you weren't kidding. Hitting the two biggest free throws of his life to that point, anyway. He doesn't make them. We're tied. Point four seconds left, and... It, oh, boy. He, there's no way they can get off anything no. if he misses them both or one. Well, stranger things have happened, but we'll see. Point four seconds left. I'm surprised they don't have people down there. Misses it intentionally. Prohaska, desperation. The Vikings of Columbus Lakeview are the state champions. Wow. The Vikings' first ever state championship. Well, we told you it'd be a pretty good basketball game, and it was. Columbus Lakeview will get the big trophy and will meet both the champions and the runners-up after these words. Columbus Lakeview defeats Bishop Newman in, for the C C1 state championship. Newman will take home the sportsmanship award and the runner-up medals. And let's meet the Cavaliers. Number 12, Josh. Number 14, Zach Miller. Number 20, Eric Bummer. Number 30, Matt Sabata. Number 40, Russ Mark. Number 32, Kyle Lewis. Number 44, Ryan Mock. Number 22, Alex Kotera. Number 32, Tyler Bosa. And number 54, Mitch Reed. All of you are now welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Bishop Newman High School, Class C1 State runners-up. And now, to the champion. First, Coach Jake Shedley. We have a special award for you.
And now, coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. We'll introduce them one by one. Number 10, Brett Couples. Number 14, Dusty Wilkie. Number 24, Wes Gehring. Number 25, Justin Aishi. Number 41, Andy Brandel. Number 44, Bo Flood. Number 51, Curtis Abbott. Number 12, Trevor Osten. Number 13, Calvin Tuffle. Number 23, Daniel Cook. Number 40, Dusty Jura. And number 50, Josh Mueller. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the 2001 Nebraska Class C1 High School Basketball Champion is Columbus Lakeview High School. Congratulations, players and coaches. And that's the soccer song, the ole, ole, ole. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They won, and what a game. And they could be back next year, just three seniors, and all the key players are back. Let's go now down to Mike, who is with Paul Johnson of Wahoo Newman. Coach, it, you guys you did everything, everything right coming down the stretch. Uh, you, you forced them to make three th free throws, but you just couldn't get over that hump. No, we really couldn't. You know, they're, they're an outstanding team. that created a lot of hard matchups for us. We didn't want to get out of our, you know, our pressing, and uh, that Cables kid was just so tough off the dribble, hard to contain, you know. And then when, then when they did miss, and they get able to lay them back in off the boards, you know, they have a very well-rounded team, and my hats are off to them. They were playing well, but also you guys give a lot of credit to your team. Well, what, what is it you guys were doing there towards the end? Well, nothing actually, just trying to play with a lot of heart, you know, getting after it. Extended. We, we figured in the last three or four minutes we're going to go out the way with, with, with what got us here the whole year, pressing, you know, and then of course we had to put him on the free throw line, and uh, we had a big turnover down here, missed the, missed the shot or two, you know, could have gone either way. But I'll tell you, they're a darn good team. Got darn good Thanks a lot, Coach, and congratulations on a great season. Thank you very much. And that's how it stands. The Vikings take one here, 55 to 53 over the Cavaliers. We'll be right back. Live coverage of the 2001 State High School Basketball Finals is brought to you in part by Peru State College, small town atmosphere, big education, big opportunities. Peru State College, where learning lasts a lifetime. Sprint PCS, connecting their customers to the people they need, when and where they need them. Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. Stone College, Nebraska's first liberal arts college, offering undergraduate and graduate degrees at campuses in Creek and Lincoln. E10 Unleaded with Ethanol, a homegrown choice that helps Nebraska and its community. The theme of their campaign is, let's get with it, Nebraska. E10 Unleaded with Ethanol. Choose your future at Nebraska's community colleges. Central, Metropolitan, Mid Plains, Northeast, Southeast, or Western Nebraska community colleges. score Columbus Lakeview 55 Wahoo Newman Bishop Newman 53 well Columbus will go one and one on championship Saturday the discoverers in class a losing to Lincoln East earlier today but Lakeview will bring home the trophy to Columbus Lakeview high and we're going to have interviews with the players and the coach in just a moment let's take a look at the final numbers field goal percentage came way up for both teams in this one 
second half, Lakeview was 9 of 14, Newman 13 of 24. Leading scores, Brent Prochaska for the runners up, 22 points, game high. Calvin Copples, 19 points. Dusty Jura, double-double, 18 points, 11 rebounds. And as I mentioned, <laughs> those two are back next year. Scary thought, isn't it? We'll talk to the champions after this. Columbus Lakeview, your new C1 state champions. Joining me now is Coach Jake Shadley now. First visit here to the title game, and you guys make the most of it. First of all, did you ever imagine that you'd even make it to the title game at the beginning of the season? Well, we had high expectations on it, uh, placed on us, so we came out preseason number one. We have some very good players, uh, and, and the kids really worked hard in the off season. And and uh, we'd hoped to be here. You know, you never you never know what's going to happen throughout the course of a season. And and certainly, uh, you know, we suffered a lot of adversity with the injury situations we had. And the kids really came together and made the most of it, and, and got us to the final game. And once you get here, anything can happen. <laughs> anything looked like it could happen after that first quarter. Very low yeah. scoring. I mean, did that surprise you coming out like that? Seven to four was the score. Not really. When you bring out a bunch of kids in that type of environment, and they have three sophomores and and uh, and we have two juniors starting the game and or three juniors starting the game and in uh, you know, a sophomore and you come out in that situation everybody's pretty tight and uh -huh. you know that and I thought really it wasn't so much that as both teams just played great defense mm -hmm. to start the game yeah. and then transition started happening and once transition started happening for us it, tra it started happening for them and then things kind of lit up that second quarter <laughs> you kind of answer my next question it seemed like whenever uh, Bishop Newman had a run you guys had an answer and that's how it was I mean it just happened that way yeah that's kind of been the, the the way things went most of the season we talk a lot about answering runs and and a couple times in the tournament uh, well every game in fact uh, we, we got a little bit of a lead and the team made a run and we didn't answer very well Thursday against Bennington we let him put on a 13 or 14 to 2 run uh, without a very good answer and I thought we did a better job against Milford's run last night and then, and then certainly against uh, Newman's run tonight you have a really big team, too, but most of them are young. They're all coming back next year. You expect a probably similar thing next year. Well, we, we hope we can do well next year. Uh, we're going to lose Daniel Cook, senior, who's who's been a big part of our team. He really stepped it up when Dusty and Calvin were out a uh, number of games with injuries. And, and we're going to lose a couple of uh, role players. And Andy Brandle is a great inspirational leader for us. And Curtis Abbott does a great job on the boards and comes in and bangs hard for us and plays fantastic defense. And, and the bulk of the team, then, we, we have back. So we're going to work hard in the offseason. Uh, we're going to enjoy this for a day or two and, and then have track season and then we're going to in soccer and then we're going to get back to basketball. No rest for you guys. No. Congratulations, Thank Coach. Thanks much. for joining us. Thank we'll have a chance to meet the rest of your new C1 State champions, Columbus Lakeview, when we come back. Welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Columbus Lakeview crowd the new C1 State champions as you Take a look at that trophy. You're going to have a name etched on there as Columbus Lakeview is the champions. Joining us now is Trevor Oston. Now, Trevor, did it surprise you at the slow start of this contest, 7-4 to four after the first quarter? Uh, not really. I knew that we could come back and, well, keep going ahead and win, get on more points. It wasn't never, ever doubt. Seemed like a lot of energy in every huddle out there. You guys never for once doubted yourself. No, not really. We're pretty, we're a pretty good group, and we can trust each other, and we know we can pull through and win. All so. right, thanks a lot, Trevor. We'll get, let you get back to your team now. Joining us now is Josh Mueller, the big guy inside, one of the Twin Towers. But I guess this whole team is filled with uh, towers out there. A lot of your points came off of offensive rebounds. Did it surprise you at e how, at what an ease it came to you getting those points? No, I just tried to box out all year and try to get the rebounds and so was same as playing, same as every other game. Well, right. you guys you guys had a tremendous size advantage out there. You guys tried to expose that and take advantage of it? Yeah, we tried. I mean, it was just, you know, trying to use every, like we played every other game. Uh -huh. Well, congratulations. To congratulations Definitely. to you, Josh. Let you get back, get back to your team. We want to fire through here so everybody gets a chance to talk to you, especially the senior, one of two seniors on the team, Daniel Cook. Uh, you get to wear the uh, net around your neck. Uh, the you got to be happy with this, especially as a senior. Oh yeah, it's great. You know, you dream about this your whole life, and then it finally comes true. So it's, it's just really cool. Now you, you started the game with an opportunity for an alley oop. You never did get that one to no. go down there, but at the same time, the big guys really came up huge today. Yeah, um, we try to get it inside as much as possible, and that opens up our outside game. Then, so me and Calvin and all the other guards can hit some threes, and you know, it just kind of makes everything a little bit easier for everybody when they do their job. So. 
Well, thanks a lot. Congratulations to you. Hold on tightly to that trophy. Dusty Jura, we've heard about this guy a lot. He made the 10-11 All-State team, but you, you could be very well be back here next year. You're just a junior. Looking forward to it? Oh, definitely. This was good to win this year, and hopefully we can do it again next year. It's just great. Did it surprise you at how you guys dominated in the middle with that size advantage? Um, it was kind of a surprise, but we knew that if we, we could control the inside game and we had to stop their transition because that was their uh, high point. So luckily we did that and we were able to win the game. Wahoo Newman never went away, though. A little concerned toward the end? Um, yeah, but, you know, you got to play through that, especially against great teams like Wahoo Newman. You're, they're going to be expected to keep it close, and luckily we just pulled it through. All right, thank you very much, yeah. Dusty Jura. Congratulations you. to you. Hold on to that trophy. We may be seeing him again next year, as we might be seeing Kelvin Copples as well. You know, you're taller in person. Wait. <laughs> He's just the guard. You were flying around there. Uh, you had a great game. How do you feel about it? Uh, I'm just excited right now where we're at. It was a fun atmosphere to play in, and no doubt, hopefully, we'll be here next year again. Well, free throws were key. You missed a few there, and then the last few you made count. What's going through your mind? Uh, I'm just thinking of all the pressure that has been on us to make free throws during the year, and I missed them, but Trevor Osen stepped up and carried us through and made the free throws for us, so it was big. We're talking about the Twin Towers down there, the size advantage that you guys had, but at the same time, it was a battle of speed at the guards. You got yourself, and then you're going up against uh, Prohasha there. Yeah, that was a good uh, matchup, because it was a full-court game both ways, and it was a fun one because we ran a lot, and both teams took a lot of points. It was fun. All right, congratulations Thank to you, you, Calvin. Let Thanks. you get back to your team. We can talk to all these guys. You guys want to come up here with one last look with that trophy as we take a look at your new Class C1 champions. <laughs>